Alright guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat number 79, featuring an interview with one of the greatest adventure game designers of all time, Mr. Scott Adams. If you were a computer gamer in the late 70s and early 80s, then you're probably already familiar with Scott Adams, or at least his games. Uh, this was He was the first uh, commercial games publisher, the first guy out there putting out uh, commercial adventure games, and they made a lot of money, made him a very wealthy and influential man. Uh, it all started in 1978 with his game Adventureland, uh, followed up by Pirate Adventure and many other games, uh, Strange Odyssey, Pyramid of Doom, uh, Ghost Town. Uh, there are many very enjoyable games in the Scott Adams collection. Uh, now, he was a child prodigy, one of these uh, genius intellects, and he's got a lot of fascinating stories about his childhood, high school years, and uh, college years. Absolutely riveting stuff. I know you're going to like this episode. <laughs> Anyway, we've got a lot to cover here, so without further ado, here is the man himself, Scott Adams. I guess before I get into the uh, your first adventure game, I'd like to hear about your college experience and how you were working with these mainframes. Um, when I went to school, actually it started back in high school. Uh, I went to universe. I went to North Miami Senior High, and as a an experiment for the entire state of Florida they decided they were going to put a computer terminal from the University of Miami in one of the high schools in Florida. They picked our high school and our math department. And I heard about this and I thought, oh wow, that sounds really neat. And went to find out what the rules were for using it. And they said, it's open to all students. We could do whatever we want with it. It was just an experiment. And I ended up finding out I really enjoyed computers. It was a Selectric typewriter. I was hooked up via a modem to an IBM 360 down at the University of Miami, and it had an APL ball on this electric, so it could use the APL programming language, which was really, uh, for me, just fascinating. It was a very mathematical language. I don't know if you've ever seen it. If you look at it, it looks totally Greek. It uses a lot of symbols, very little English. Um, and what I f did was I found, it, found that I wanted to write games. And the very first major program I wrote for it was a tic-tac-toe program that you played against the computer, and the computer never lost. It took me probably a month to six weeks to do it. I learned a lot of things along the way. During that time, I would actually go, I got permission to go in and have the janitor let me in at 6 a.m. in the morning into the school. I could use the computer then until classes. And then at night, I had permission to be locked into the school and be able to stay till 10 or 11 o'clock and let myself out. So that was my uh, introduction to computers. Up to that point, um, this was, I think it was 11th grade when this started happening. Uh, no, this was 12th grade. I had actually been, uh, so, uh, 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 gotten permission to do early admission, and at that time it was University of Miami. I was gonna skip my 12th grade and go into pre-med at University of Miami. And I'm glad I didn't. I talked my mom into me not doing that because I just didn't feel ready for, for college. Um, and that was the year that I found computers was in my senior year. And everything changed after that. So how in the, how in the world did you convince this janitor to uh, let you in at night? Um, I had permission from, well, I went to my math teacher who ran the resource center, told him I was really into the programming, showed him what I was doing. And then he went to the principal and got permission uh, to allow me to use the computer at all these odd hours. And that was, uh, for me, just fantastic. Um, then that summer, after uh, getting ready to go to, to college, and I went to college at, it's called Florida Tech today, but it used to be called uh, Florida Institute of Technology. At that time, I was going into the uh, computer science, uh, uh, bachelor's of science in computer science, because that was uh, what I had been discovering was very interesting. And over the summer, of, uh, after getting out of high school and before I went to the University of Miami, um, I got permission from a local community college to be able to use their computers in the summer. 
and uh, just continued my basically self-education of, of programming. And then when I got to the college, um, I went down to the computer science department and asked if there was any way whatsoever I could work in their department. And they said, yeah, we need some help sticking mailing labels on alumni newsletters going out. And I said, fine, I'll do it. Please, let me do it. Anything, anything. I'd be very happy to. They said, oh, sure, go right ahead. Um, three years later, I was in charge of the entire school's financial package. I did all the accounts receivable, accounts payable, and the payroll system. I was in charge of the entire system. And I was also getting free tuition from the college at that point. So uh, needless to say, I sort of moved moved up in the ranks. <laughs> and once again, I really enjoyed, uh, in my spare time, writing games on the computer. I don't know if you remember it, but uh, there was a Scientific American article that came out with um, Conway's Life. Um, it's a very interesting concept of uh, uh, simple rules in a two-dimensional space. And I went ahead and wrote software for it to actually play the game of life on the computer and I uh, had a lot of fun with that. Uh, my college years were very interesting with computers. Um, I remember one year I got into a class where I was supposed to be taking, uh, uh, it was an assembler class, that's right, we were supposed to be learning machine language or something of that nature. Um, it was running upstairs on the um, student's computer, which was a DDP24 at that time whereas the mainframe downstairs was a Sigma Xerox. Um, I went downstairs since I had access to the mainframe computer, wrote an entire simulator for the upstairs computer, then turned it around and wrote the assembly language, uh, uh, the assembler for the class on my simulator. Then I wrote the projects for the class on my simulator and turned them in. And needless to say, I got all A's and I didn't have to wait for lab time or anything like that. The next year, we had a course, I believe, on compilers, or I'm not, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was a course where um, we were supposed to write, oh, we were supposed to write an assembler for the class or something like that. And I remember going in and telling the professor what I had done the previous year, showed him all my work, and he ended up uh, not only uh, uh, allowing me to basically skip doing all the classwork, but I ended up doing some guest lectures in the class itself <laughs> as an uh, uh, undergraduate assistant, as it were, which was fascinating. So I had a lot of fun with that. So how, were, how did your uh, family react to this? I mean, it seems like by all, by all accounts, you would have been considered a, a, a prodigy. <laughs> um, uh, I, was, I was going to school in Melbourne. My family was down in Florida, so they really didn't know a lot what was going on. Um, about this, while I was at college, I also my, had two younger brothers that came up and um, I bought a house. Uh, my dad's urging, he said renting was not the, the best idea in the long run, it was better to start by buying a house. I think it was good advice because over a lifetime I think I've had like 13 houses. Um, anyway, my brothers came up and stayed with me and uh, uh, they each one have been uh, uh, really phenomenal in their own rights of the things they've done. Uh, I know um, one of my brothers has got uh, a very interesting invention that uh, he's currently trying to get uh, brought to fruition. If it does, it's going to be earth shattering when that happens. Uh, my other brother, I believe, was a vice president of IBM for a while. Um, he's down in Florida. So uh, I'm not the, the, the only Adams boy that uh, did well. My sister's a uh, a judge down in uh, Fort Myers. So, <laughs> uh, our our parents were very much uh, uh, believers of uh, do the best you can and then do a little more, and uh, they sort of ingrained that in it in us as we were growing up. What did your friends think about it? Um, the friends I had was mostly family and students there at the college. Uh, needless to say, I didn't have a lot of time to do a lot of socializing. I remember the freshman year I got rushed by uh, A.E. Pi and uh, I actually turned them down and they were kind of shocked and I said, well, I'm here to get an education, I'm here to do well and I really don't think I'm going to have the time to do everything I want and also belong to a fraternity. 
So for me, that wasn't in the cards. And I'm usually happier working with the computers than with people anyway, so that, that worked out well for me. Why do you think that is? Uh, I have no idea. Probably just my own personality type. <laughs> what do you think it is about, about programming computers that have fascinated you so much? That you could set up logical rules to do something and then have it perform while you weren't controlling it anymore. Um, I don't know. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, uh, probably five or six, uh, uh, not five or six years old, but in fifth or sixth grade, we took a field trip, and I think it was University of Miami, to a computer center. During the field trip, they had all us kids on one side of this big glass wall, and the other side they had all these, quote, computer science majors and scientists that were on the other side that were working with the computers. I remember thinking at that time, I want to get in that room. That looks fascinating. So, for whatever reason, I had always been fascinated with computers. You were uh, also interested in science fiction. Yes, and, and still, still am. Um, growing up, I did read a lot of science fiction. This was back in the 50s and 60s when I was growing up. Um, Heinlein and Clark and Asimov back then were cutting edge, brand new, and just fascinating. Um, Philip K. Dick. Um, uh, Analog Magazine, Astounding, uh, John Campbell. I mean, these were all things that I, were, I was cutting my teeth on. Basically, because they were proposing things that were different and sort of eye-opening. And from things I've read, a lot of engineers uh, of that era, later, especially in NASA, a lot of them were affected by the early science fiction writers because they were saying, why can't we do this? Why not? Let's go for it. And it's interesting, today I get a lot of fan mail from folks that were younger um, back in the 70s that were kids growing up that were playing my games and have written me back telling me how much it had affected their life for the positive, that it got them a career in engineering or in science or in computers and so forth. And that, that's kind of humbling to know that I had such a positive influence on so many people. I'm really happy to see, hear that. Are there any novels or maybe movies that really you think uh, had a huge impact on your decision to go into computer programming? Or any one in particular, I guess I should... Uh, um, not really. Uh, probably the, f the closest thing might have been uh, Heinlein's The Moon is a Harsh Mish. The Moon is a Harsh Mistress with Mike the Computer. But even that really wasn't what was doing it. Even as a kid, I was a game player. I loved playing games. And of course, then it was all board games or imagination games or games with my friends. But I just love gaming. And the concept of being able to do something with computers and games just always seemed like, wow, there's so many possibilities here. And sitting here, well, we're having a video conversation right now. I remember being a kid and going to the World's Fair in 1964 or so uh, in New York, where they had the first coast-to-coast -coast video conference, and they were saying, oh, this one day is going to be uh, commonplace, which, of course, even today, it's not as commonplace as it could be. But we're, we're seeing the future come alive that was predicted then by visionaries, and it's amazing. And that's all for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Scott's got a lot of great stories coming up. We've only just scratched the surface of this interview, so please stay tuned for that. If you like this episode, then please comment on it. You can visit us at armchairarcade.com. Love to hear from you there. A lot of great content, <laughs> retro gamers <laughs> and vintage computers. Uh, delightful stuff. I will leave you with a quotation, this time from a great Irish writer. See if you can recognize who it is. The man of genius makes no mistakes. His errors are volitional and are the portals of discovery. That is, of course, James Joyce. I'll see you guys next week.